I'm Rick Taylor. Thanks for joining me. But do you want to give your children the best possible chance to do well in college, to earn higher salaries, and save more for retirement? Well, it's pretty simple. According to the latest research, don't pay for their college education. Now, one of the most popular money scripts that I encounter is the notion of being a good parent means paying for your child's college education. And most parents do this at the expense of taking care of themselves in retirement, which is a pretty high price to pay. The most popular reason that I hear from parents for funding their kids' college education is empowerment. They want to spare the kids the burden of repaying school loans after graduation, and they also want them to be able to focus on their studies without the distraction of having to work to put themselves through college. For most parents, allowing students to concentrate on classes so they can perform well, make better grades, and obtain better jobs is a sacrifice that they are very willing to make. It's just one problem with this scenario. It's a myth. In most cases, parents who fund their kids' college education are ensuring they will actually do worse in school than those who have to pay their own way. Now this is the finding of new research conducted by Laura T. Hamilton, published January 7, 2012 by the American Sociological Review under the title, More is More, more, is more or More is Less. Her study shows that students whose education is funded by parents or through student loans have actually lower GPAs than students who in some way must work to put themselves through school. Hamilton found that students who have to do something requiring them to take personal responsibility for obtaining the funds for their education do best and carry higher GPAs. This includes those who receive grants, scholarships, veterans benefits, or who participate in work-study programs. Parental uh, funds or borrowing, they found, provide the time, money, and proximity, like living on or near campus, uh, necessary to de 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 delve deeply into college peer cultures, not studies. Hamilton notes that the gifted time that students and uh, parental funding provide isn't usually poured into studies. Instead, students tend to focus that extra time on increasing their social life. The average college student receiving money from loans or parents spends less time studying in college than in high school. Even though they spend about 28 hours a week studying, the research found they devote a full 41 hours a week to social and recreational endeavors. Put more succinctly, students who have to work to pay their way through college spend slightly more time studying and significantly less time partying. The net result in this is a big personal and societal lose-lose. Those of you who have sacrificed your retirement to help your kids through college have potentially done harm to both your children and yourselves. Your kids have probably done worse in college, thus obtaining lower paying jobs. This loss of potential income has downsides for both children and parents. Why? Because previous research has shown that parents who don't fully fund their own retirement years will actually end up costing their children five times as much as they would have spent by funding their own college education. So understandably, a few of you are now choking on your last sip of coffee as you read that last paragraph, or in this case, heard that last paragraph. This is not all at all the outcome that you intended. The evidence, though, is clear. Parents who take care of fully funding their own retirement instead of sacrificing to pay for kids' education are not being selfish. Instead, they give their children something far more valuable than the cost of tuition. That is, the gift of success and achievement. Thanks.
for listening.